1924, private investigator Edward Pierce is sent to investigate the tragic death of the Hopkins family in their imposing mansion on the isolated island of Dark War. Between unfriendly locals and dubious police reports, it becomes clear that there's more to this case than meets the eye. Soon enough, Pierce is plunged into the terrifying world of conspiracies, cultists, and cosmic horrors. Right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kieran, and today we're going to be returning back to the upcoming role-playing survival horror game Call of Cthulhu. I was actually going to do a video on Call of Cthulhu like two months ago, but I never really got around to it because there were so many like new titles coming out that I wanted to cover before returning to the old titles that I covered beforehand. And I made good time in two since it's around two weeks from release date. But anyway, enough of me blabbing, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's do it. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Welcome to Dark War Island. The setting of Call of Cthulhu and where the private investigator Edward Pierce is sent to investigate the mysterious deaths of the Hopkin family and the fire at their estate. Edward Pierce is a World War I vet who suffers from a drinking problem and PTSD which actually affects gameplay in ways we don't really know yet. When Edward first shows up on the island he's greeted by unwelcoming locals which he does not handle very well to be honest. <laughs> when you want to make an impression the first thing you do is not um you know your uh, aggressive nature. As you journey around the island and further investigate the Hawkins case, Edward can interact with locals through multiple dialogue trees that can result in varying situations and paths. I'm looking for this address. Warehouse 36, Darkwater Harbor. Ah, and so who are you? Through conversations with the locals you can gather more clues to the case and even unlock more objectives. Not much is actually known about Darkwater Island, but I sense like a Shadow Over Innsmouth feel to it in terms of the way the story is going anyway. If you've not read Shadow Over Innsmouth, it's another great short story by Lovecraft, who is actually the same writer of the original Call of Cthulhu if you didn't already know. And it follows a student who travels to the town of Innsmouth and discovers like a secret kill that offers human sacrifices to the gods in exchange for like large fish hauls and jewellery. I know it's not really that great, but you know. <laughs> You would think you would, they would just like offer a goat or something or do the whole Wicker Man thing. Anyway, there's actually another Cthulhu game based on the Shadow of Innsmouth story called Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth that you should definitely check out because it's a brilliant survival horror game. It's actually, I, I, do you know what? Now that I'm uh, thinking about it, like playing that game, I never realised the comparisons between Dark Corners of the Earth and Shadow of Innsmouth because I actually played uh, Dark Corners of the Earth before. Um, before reading Shadow of Innsmouth, so. One thing I want to correct from my last Cthulhu video was the semi-open world aspect of the game. This was actually cleared up during a live stream of the developers, they said that the game is linear in structure with it acting out in levels, however in some levels, like in chapter 2, if you've not seen the unreleased gameplay you should go check that out right now because you actually see the first hour of the game. But there in that released gameplay in chapter 2 there is a, like a small semi-open world where you can go and explore and investigate and get clues and stuff like that. These open levels can actually lead the player down in different branching paths depending on where the player like, explores and who he talks to. A major gameplay element of Call of Cthulhu is this sanity system. This, that, this system is the one I'm actually most interested in. Like the investigation part is pretty cool, but the sanity system, uh, I want to see how that does because, like, you've seen it in other games. You've seen it in Amnesia. You've seen it in the um, the new early access title Vis uh, Visage or Visage. Um, you see it in that, but it's not really that great. It's like, oh yeah, light smashes. Oh, fantastic, that's spooky. <laughs> in this game, however, it is confirmed that Edward will eventually descend into madness because who wouldn't, after seeing such, like, so much cosmic horror and, like, massive tentacle gods, I'm pretty sure I would not be right in the head after that as well. Depending on Edward's sanity level at the end of the game and your choices throughout will result in different endings as well. So yes, Edward will become slightly insane at the end, but how insane depends on your actions to prevent his insanity. So you're probably asking what does the loss of Sani actually do in terms of gameplay? Like I was saying there, Envisage, um, if you stand in the dark for too long, like, lights start to go out. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, it makes Edward start to hallucinate and actually start to question his own reality. You can start seeing monsters that aren't really there and start to gather clues that you think make sense but actually don't resolve anything or add to the case whatsoever. Also, you can pick up clues that don't actually exist. <laughs> so you can have that in your piece together and you're like, holy shit, this, I've solved this investigation. Oh, wait, half my evidence is all in my head. Shit. <laughs> also, I can imagine, I'm pretty sure I brought this up in my last video as well, with monsters not actually being there, you do have a little bit of combat in this game, so if you waste ammo trying to kill a monster that isn't really there, yeah, you need to basically kill 
which one is actually real and what one actually isn't. <laughs> In order to like save your ammo and just to save your resources anyway. Since this game is a blend of both survival horror and role playing, the player can actually upgrade and add skills to Edward as you level up and earn skill points. These points can be added to various skills such as investigation, psychology, occultism and strength. These skills you will need throughout your investigation as it helps you understand the world more and gather more in depth clues and evidence. Another new thing that I didn't cover before is the reconstruction mode, which when activated in a crime area allows Edward to piece together what happens by highlighting certain objects and markings in, in order to like reconstruct the scene. There is also side objectives that can be taken and resolved in certain levels of the game. In these side cases Edward can recruit investigators throughout the town to help out. I think these little cases are there so you can gain experience and add more skills to Edward so he can continue on with the main quest or the main story. <laughs> I'm saying quest like it's Fallout because the last like, topic video I did was Fallout so yeah. Call of Cthulhu also lasts for around 12 to 15 hours long but I don't know if that includes side content or not or if that's just like the main story. If that's the main story then that's actually pretty cool uh, for a game. For a single player game at least 12 to 15 hours long is probably a good, good amount. Because with a game like this you don't want it lasting too long because then you just won't get affected by it as much and you also you don't want to be too short because if it's too short no one's like you're going to enjoy it but you're going to be sitting there wanting more at the end because if it's a five hour game everyone's going to be disappointed you know. So what's my opinions on the game? I am very very excited in this game because I've I only recently in recent years I've only got into like Lovecraft and all that. I actually started reading the Necronomicon uh, earlier this year and it's fucking, it's brilliant. I, I love, I love delving into these worlds and the one thing I'm actually disappointed about um, in terms of Lovecraft stuff is that there's not really any good movies. There's not really any good, like, Lovecraft based movies and what, like, I'm not saying this, like, there's no good movies inspired by Lovecraft. I'm not saying, I'm just saying there's no, like, Call of Cthulhu movie, which is quite disappointing because these games seem like they're doing a good job of that, but there's, like, no movie. If I'm wrong on that, please link me a movie. Um, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. But yeah, Call of Cthulhu, the atmosphere looks fucking brilliant. Um, the gameplay looks, oh, just looks so cool as well. Uh, I'm actually surprised by the dialogue trees. Actually, when I was watching the gameplay uh, earlier this year, I'm pretty sure it was at Gamescom. Uh, it looked, it, I was really surprised to see it, because I thought it was just going to be like linear dialogue scenes, because, um... Uh, just because I've been playing Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth and yeah that is like a quite an early game that came out in like what 2006, 2003, something like around that area so I was expecting gameplay along the lines of that but even though that is a brilliant game just don't go, don't get me wrong on that and Call of Cthulhu just seems like it's taking a lot of inspiration from that game and making that a lot better. So that's that for this video, thank you all for watching and before I go I would like to just thank my patrons Simon609, Kendall Gunshop, Devil and Proxy one for their continued support over on my Patreon page, thank you so much. So will you be playing Call of Cthulhu when it comes out on the 30th of October? I probably won't on release day at least because like Red Dead is coming out then after that is Fallout 76 so unfortunately like Call of Cthulhu is like wedged in between them and um, I, I just won't have time to really go through and play Call of Cthulhu. Especially with college and all that as well, like Red Dead is definitely going to take up a bit of time and then Fallout 76 is definitely going to take up a bit of time because me and my friends are going to be playing it, I'm going to be doing videos on it and it's going to be a good time, uh, but it's going to be very time consistent. <laughs> but I do really want to check out Call of Cthulhu, I'm definitely going to pick it up at some point, maybe later this year or maybe in December, probably, maybe, I'll ask for it for Christmas. <laughs> anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you later, bye bye.